comes more from the influence of the racing sailors than than the actual duty itself. So I'm hoping that we can show you in this that it's not too, it's actually interesting and it can be good fun. So let's see. Let's I'll see. Look and, uh, well, I would like to be a little bit more, hopefully, hopefully this year gonna be different than previously, previous one. So um, I would like to do a little bit more into club and sailing and uh, yeah, just started properly again. <laughs> definitely, definitely good. Okay, so Linda, I was yeah. once I helped Mark Dunn with the race officer because he was doing it on his own and he, he said that I had to go and help him. I was just in the rescue boat. And um, it actually is really kind of quite speedy at the end. Actually. I had to pull out all the numbers for, for Mark. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's amazing how you get quite a few clumps at once. And that was really, yeah. I mean, I thought it was really instructive actually, but I really understood that it's actually quite high pressure, <laughs> much more high pressure than I thought it was. It can, it can be that. high pressure. And, and at a higher level, a lot of people will use um, a, a, a voice recorder and they will also use video if they need to go back to see who crossed the line when and so on. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, we've done that when we've, done duties at Grafham. I say we, I don't usually do them, Nikki does. Okay, um, so if you're up for this, now what I want you to think about while you're doing this, I want you to, to learn, hopefully, but also if this works, this presentation might be made available for everyone else. So I want you also to tell me what's missing, what works, what doesn't and so on. So judge the presentation as well as learning, if you can. And um, before we start, just to say I am recording, so I hope that's all right with everybody. Please say so if not. <laughs> and we will also run out of time at f after 40 minutes, but if everyone can rejoin with the same link, I'll let you in again after 40 minutes. Gemma, next time, I've, um, I've got a Zoom account now, so next time I'll send out the invite and we can do it that way. Oh, Maria's disappeared. Oh, no, she's coming yes. back. Okay, so um, do you need to share screen now? Um, if Gemma could just let them... Yeah, so Gemma, if you can yeah. let Nikki share screen, she's in charge now, so... No, I'm just checking. Done. Okay. <laughs> Dogs. I haven't. Okay. Right. Okay, so it's on that mode. I'm sorry about the dogs. It's all right. Okay, so here we go. So assistant race officer training one of the very few bonuses to doing this duty is you do get a free cup of tea or coffee throughout the day so we've lost we've lost the slides now i can't see the slides oh, i can see I them can. yeah oh. i can oh where have mine gone oh I've got a moving image of water, mm. very fancy. Yeah. Well, maybe when we go off the moving image, I'll come back to some detail. Yeah. Okay, let's move off the moving image. So let's go to the next slide. Okay, so can you see it now, Gemma? Yeah, I've found it. Thank you. Okay, you can see lovely Tom's legs. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's so that's... <laughs> oh, gotcha. Yes, he's not like me. Yes, he couldn't get his Wednesday socks on. <laughs> The Port Starboard ones, aren't they? Oh, I don't know. That's so anyway, this is this is Laura, Tom, and Neil um, on duty for one of the classic and vintage racing dinghy association events. Which is, if you want to do some high pressure race officering, this is where to go. But anyway, what does the assistant? So Tom here is the race officer and because it can be fairly frantic he actually has two assistants one is Neil who's a geek and one is Laura who's an SI racing sailor and a geek so covered on all fronts 
So what we're going to think mostly about what they do, about what Neil and Laura are doing, because I never know what Tom's doing. OK, so first thing, help start and finish races. You put out the signing on sheets. We'll have a look at one of those in a moment. OK, we're having a look at one of those now. Here's the signing on sheet. So this goes under the course board in the clubhouse and you can see it's got all the data at the top with event, who the race officer is, timing and so on and so forth. And then you can see that every competitor puts down their name, their Portsmouth number, if they know it. And that is effectively for Hunts Club Sailing, that is effectively how they enter the race. Okay, next one. No, no, now we need to go back. Now we need to go back. Okay. Clicks, clicks not. Okay, just go to the next. That's go to the. Okay, there we go. So you can see these are your duties during the day as the assistant race officer. First, you put out the signing on sheets. You help raise and lower the flags, and you can see in that picture. Does anybody know what those flags are that you can see? Is that the preparation flag? Nope. Class flag? Nope. <laughs> Lost. Uh, okay, then. X. X. It's yep, the they're white both and blue recall one. flags. Okay, so the yellow and blue one is first substitute general recall. Oh. And mm. the one by Tom's bum <laughs> is the X flag which is the individual recall. We'll go on to those in a moment. Then your other duties are record the lap times of the boats as they come through the start finish line, record the finish times and help calculate the results. Okay, should we jump ahead a couple, Nikki? Sure, I'm just gonna, I don't know why it might be the transfer. Okay, so flags and hooters. What we're going to imagine for the purpose of this session is that we're doing a typical race with two starts, fast and slow handicap. So the two flags that you can see at the top, they're numeral pennants, they're not flags, they're pennants, okay? Have we got a click for this? Oh, okay, we're having a talk, I'm just gonna okay. So, I'm not sure what's happening here, but we've got we've got an example of more than one start, and that means we need a 12 minute sequence. We're having IT problems. I'm I am beset by IT problems. Can you just put a slide up? Okay, so what we've got here, we've got a, we've got an example of more than one star. Some of you that did the um, no, just leave it there. So some of you that did the race training way back when will recognise these. Okay, we, these this slide is essentially showing the flags we need and the time sequence for how this race will start. So for two starts, we've got a 12 minute sequence, one flag goes up, at nine minutes, another flag goes up and the prep flag goes up. Now essentially, although that looks complicated, as assistant race officer, your job is just to do what you're told, okay? Can we go to the next slide? The, no. In the race box, we've got this device here. Can you see the um, a device with black plugs going into it? Yeah. That is the race timer, okay? And that clever little box of tricks can be, well, you can see what it says. You can program it to count down for the correct number of starts. So all, all the race officer has to do is, set, is program in two starts at three minute intervals. That box of tricks 
does the rest. So all you have to do, it even, it even sounds the hooter. And as you can see, the hooter is powerful enough to need to be outside once you're sounding it. So you're standing outside by the flagpole. You've put your flags onto the um, ropes, the halyards out there. And the race officer will tell you which flag to hoist when. And when you hoist the right flag, the race box will also make a sound signal and you'll be hoisting or lowering a different flag every three minutes, okay? Once the race has started, that box of tricks, the race box, will then start counting up and time the races. So you'll be looking at that again to get the start and finish times for each boat. Now I'm hoping that we can do some race box training. I've just got to familiarize it with familiarize myself with it a bit better. But if you want to learn how to use the race box, we we can do that soon. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay, so what you've got there is you've got a map of the lake, very basic. You can see that there are five marks on the race course. The marks always go in sequence of red, blue, orange, yellow. I haven't got a yellow pen, so there's a Y for that. And P for pink. Can you go back? Okay, and you can see that the race hut there on the shore, that's where you'll be. You can see the little cross outside, which is your flag staff. And out in the middle of the lake somewhere will be a white buoy. That'll be the other end of the line. So that imaginary line marks the start and finish. And you can also use it as your line through which boats sail when they complete a lap. Now it's not always the case, unfortunately, that boats will sail right through that line, but they can sail through an extension of it. By what I, what I mean by that is they won't always sail inside the white buoy. They might sail beyond it. So you have to imagine an extension of that line. That's just for when you're recording your lap times. When they finish, they have to come in between the mast and the white boy. Okay, next slide. Um, Vanessa, can I just ask what part of the boat, when it crosses the line, are you just looking at the, the very, at the bow when it crosses? Is that click? That's a, done? that's a, that's a great question because actually that's just changed in the racing rules. Um, and it is now the hull okay so, so if not, you're not the bowsprit or the not spinnaker the bowsprit, or... not the spinnaker not the trapeze not you not nothing it's the hull okay so if it's me or dirk and i've got my bowsprit out and dirk's got his bowsprit out and he's trying to get past me it, our bowsprits are irrelevant um, because it might be that to try and fool people that I'm going faster than Dirk, I let my spinnaker go a bit, I let the halyard go a bit, and it'll fly further forwards. That's, that's cheating. And to get round that, they've now determined that it is simply the hull. So does that answer the question? Just, just the bow of the hull? Just the part, the, the solid part of the boat. Yes, in, in your boat, it's not such a such an issue, Roger, because you haven't got faffy things like trapezes and um, bowsprits. But likewise, if you decided to swim with your boat across the line, it would be that your boat that would be finishing first and not you if you were attempting to pull it. So that <laughs> is a... That is a new rule, but it's a good one because it stops people letting their spinnakers fly forwards or whatever they were doing. Interestingly, the, um, the world sailing haven't quite defined where hull starts and 
where hole finishes and bowsprit starts, but I don't think we need to worry about that because we don't have boats with fixed bowsprits at Hunts, not yet anyway. Okay, so you can read this using the race box, which will have started when the race started. We have a, we have a count up going on all the time and we know when each boat comes through the line, as Maria said, he might, the race officer, he or she might call it out and you might write it down, or you might call it out and he might write it down on the recording sheet. Okay, here's the recording sheet next. Yeah, so here you are. This is a blank lap sheet. Now, I know the, um, the sailing committee experiment a lot with this lap sheet and I still don't think we've quite got it right, but essentially you can see where it says sail number. So you write all the different sail numbers down here under that in that leftmost column. And my preferred way, yeah, my preferred way is just to leave the sail numbers in there and then write the times in and ignore the next opportunity to write down sale number because I find that just easier to follow. But I know some people will enter sale number differently for each lap. So it just depends. So if say laser 166 was coming through first on lap one, you, I would just keep laser 666 in the top line, but another race officer might for lap two move them if they're in a different position. Um, the thing with lap times is that they, they uh, need uh, to be... Sorry, Abby? I'm struggling to type that bit out. <laughs> I, um, I think it's sort of explanatory on the screen. Oh, look, magic things are I'm happening. Leaving I'm leaving it. Yeah. Um, if you just message to Jane that it's sort of explanatory on the screen, and I will, I can send her more detail. Okay, we've, so somebody else speaking to me? I was just going to say we've got five minutes and that before we need to redial in. Okay, so the thing with the lap times is they need to be as precise as you can get them, just in case some boats don't do as many laps as others. But for the first couple of laps, you need basically, you want them to be relatively precise, but it's not going to matter if you miss one or two. It's only as we get towards the finish time that we need to start to be more precise. Okay, so can we have the next page, next sheet? Is it worth saying that, um if you find that you can't get the time, it's better just to say that they've completed the lap. So like make a mark or whatever on your time to say the boat has gone through rather than just kind of forget it altogether. Does yes, that make sense? it absolutely does, Hannah, because some of what we're doing here is we're just, we're just even if all the boats are the same, we still need a record of the order in which they're coming through the line, okay? So if we have a look at this screen, we've got fast boats sailing against slow boats. So this, is, this starts to be an explanation of why these times, if we're, in, if we're in boats where the different classes of boat are racing against each other, we need these times to be able to work out the results. Okay, next slide. Okay, there it is. Okay, so there's calculating the results. We'll come back to that in a moment, but essentially, how long have we got, Gemma? Three minutes. Okay, essentially, I'll just talk a little bit about the Portsmouth Yardstick Scheme. Every year, clubs send in their race result data. The important part 
it's the, the times that boats are sailing relative to other classes and that enables some sort of wonderful human being or machine to calculate from that data these things called Portsmouth numbers and each class of boat, each recognised class of boat is assigned a number every year. Okay, and people, if you want to talk to people and start an argument in a sailing club, <laughs> tell someone that their boat is a handicap bandit <laughs> and that will do the job because that will upset people. Are we on time, Gemma? I can as boat. The splash, <laughs> the splash is a complete bandit. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, two minutes. I'm just an excellent sailor, Abby. <laughs> well, I know that. Far better than me. The, the, the point is that the handicap system is definitely not perfect. And in fact, there are, to my knowledge, in this country, three handicap systems functioning. So if I sail my boat at Grafham, my handicap is 979, which is good. If I sail it at Hunts, the same boat, my handicap is 948. So that's a massive difference. How can that be the case? That, do they so, use the Great Lakes? That's it. They're using the Great Lakes. So in theory, they ought to be the same, but they're massively different. So you can see there's, there's great fun and scope for debate and banter around the handicap system so it's always going to be our, our our best guess at how boats do relative to one one another when we're doing mixed class racing and this is why some people don't like handicap racing they will always prefer fleet racing i'm going to stop talking now so yeah, we we're going get, to be we're going to be kicked off now. I think if we all get kicked off and get back in again, yeah. Oh, well, it's very good so far. I'm keeping up with it. Excellent. Good. Everybody's still there at the moment. We're all looking at each other. Yes. Do we do need. get a few minutes extra grace just in case you haven't finished off. Okay. <laughs> I think it's